So, you've decided now is the time to get into shape. The pounds have been creeping on over the last few years and you're now at your heaviest you've been. Exercising much less over the past few years to now nearly doing nothing at all as life has taken over. And you're noticing you're less fit than you used to be and getting out of breath even after just climbing the stairs. But now you have the motivation to do something about it. But you're not sure where to start. You notice a lot of people running and that seems like the best option as you don't know what else to do. And when you get a bit fitter, you may look to join the gym. But stop. This is actually not the best option or best place to start. If this is your situation, running is probably the worst starting point as an exercise choice. And in this video, we are going to explain why, along with what other main things will contribute to getting into shape and what else you can do as a great starting point to then get you into running, if that's what you want to do. Because a lot of times, people don't even want to get into running, they're just not sure what else to do. And there are definitely many other options to running if wanting to get into shape. So the reason that running can be bad as an initial exercise program when looking to lose weight is because when you're in that place we've just mentioned, you'll be carrying more weight than you're used to, hence why I wanted to lose it, together with a background of inactivity, which has helped contribute to that weight gain. This inactivity would have led to deconditioning, so weaker muscles, and this would mean less stability around joints. So, imagine now, if you're starting running with more weight than you're used to carrying through less stable joints, it will really increase the likelihood of injury, which will then derail your journey, affect motivation, and make weight loss harder. Now, if you've remained generally strong and just put on a few pounds, it's likely running is not going to be that much of an issue. And running is a great exercise to do and definitely something to build into if that's what you're wanting to get to. And it can play a big part in a weight loss and health journey, just not as the first thing. Before we go into the exercises you can work on instead to help build into running, you want to work on getting some of the weight down too. And there are two other things that will need to be addressed. The first is diet. Now, we aren't gonna delve too much into this because there's huge amounts of information out there and people will likely find different approaches working for them. But there's no getting away from the importance diet plays in the weight loss journey. The main thing to say on this is to have a bit of a mindset shift. Do not say you're going on a diet. Your diet is just what you eat, so you can't go on or off a diet, you just change it. The idea of going on a diet is that you're going to change your diet for a short period of time and then go off and change it back to what you were originally eating. This basically means you're going to change your body composition and lose some weight for a short period of time and then put the weight back on when you go off onto the original diet. This is that yo-yo dieting trap that so many get caught into. The mindset shift you want to have is that you're changing your diet for good, long term and seeing the weight loss journey more of a year period rather than just a few weeks or a couple of months. This would also be a much healthier way of doing it long term than that crash dieting. So this means setting your diet up so you can stick to it and it's sustainable for you. That means you're going to have things in there that you enjoy and you aren't going crazy hungry, but at the same time, it's getting you towards your goal. And most people know what contributes to their weight gain deep down. And generally, you're better bulking a lot of meals out with low calorie density, nutritious whole foods like veg, and minimizing high calorie density processed foods like cake. You also have to be accountable for it. You decide what you pick up and put in your mouth to eat and no one is gonna be losing that weight for you. The next really important aspect for weight loss, which you might not think is a big deal, but it's actually huge, is the social aspect. This refers to social outings, but also what your social setting is like at home and work. For the majority of cultures, being social generally revolves around consuming calories, whether drinking or going out for meals. But being social is incredibly important for our health. And a lot of the time when people go on their diet, they will sacrifice a lot of this. 
However, this can be more unhealthy for us long term and is an example of things not being sustainable. Social isolation is being compared as being as bad for your health as smoking. So you definitely want plans of how to deal with your social life that keeps you on plan with the weight loss, but is also sustainable and doesn't make you a hermit. Think as well of other ways to be social that fit in with being healthy, such as activities or going to the gym with friends. The biggest though is the support from people in your household. If they are eating really unhealthy, it's going to be way too hard to stick to healthier habits. Similarly, if people are bringing cakes into work every week, either factor that into a plan or find a way to minimize your intake. So let's go through an exercise plan if you're not doing running to start, which will help build up some strength and stability. Starting with exercise number one, which is split squats. Keep the legs around hip width apart with a big gap between them. Keep the knee in line, so really start working the glute on that side. You don't have to come up fully, which will help keep that tension on the muscle. Push through the front leg and make sure that's the one working. Do around 40 seconds on each side. Again, trying to keep the tension the whole time. This will always be harder on the second leg as it will inevitably have some involvement when the first leg is forward, no matter how much you try for it not to. Exercise two is working a bit more now on that posterior chain and we're doing bridging. Laid on your back, lift your hips up in the air and squeeze the glutes. Lift the toes up so the heels are on the floor and push through them. Make sure as soon as you touch the floor, you come straight back up to really keep that tension. You want to do this again 40 to 60 seconds. Exercise number three is a classic, which is squats. Sending the hips back, keep the knees in line and squeeze the glutes as you raise back up. Focus here on the control of the movement. You don't have to fully come up to again work on keeping the tension on the muscle and try to get that muscle burn. Keep that tension for around 40 to 60 seconds. For the fourth exercise, you want to be working on balance, which is really important with running. It's as simple as standing on one leg. When you do this, it's actually pretty hard and you'll feel loads of muscles working to keep you still. Build this to around one minute, seeing if you can do it without touching the floor with the other foot. Even with these being new exercises, you may want to build into these slowly, rather than overloading too quickly. Start with around 20 seconds on each with longer rest, then to 25 as you get stronger, then 30 seconds and so on. To make this easier for you to complete, we have the full circuit in a video here that you can follow along to and complete. When you find you are able to complete this, then start thinking about a graded running program. Start off slow and gradual, build up, and try and find a friend you can do it with to start incorporating that social aspect as well.